السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد My dear viewers Welcome to another live edition of Ask Huda Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 002 then 023855131 Alternatively area code 002 then 0100546 and the WhatsApp numbers area code 001-347-806-0025 and finally area code 001-361-489-1503 um, We are both live on the Facebook page I'm Salah Official as well as the YouTube channel and let's begin right away by tackling some of the questions which we received by the time you start ringing in Muhammad Izhar Ibrahim is asking, do we have to ask for forgiveness after sunnah prayers? If we can just modify the verb have to be, is it also recommended to recite istighfar thrice after the voluntary prayers similar to the mandatory prayers? And the answer in brief is yes, it is recommended. Why? Because in the hadith of Thawban, in which istighfar, and by the way, for the viewers, istighfar means seeking forgiveness. He narrated that, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا انصرف من صلاته استغفر الله ثلاثا وقال اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, Whenever he would finish his prayers, and he did not specify whether it is a mandatory prayer or a regular voluntary prayers. He said, كان صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا انصرف من صلاته, his prayers, and without specifying whether fard or nafila. He used to say, astaghfirullah, 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 three times. And then he would say, oh Allah, indeed, you are the most perfect, and as salam and from you peace comes. Blessed you are the honor of majesty and nobility. So, since he didn't specify, it's recommended to say it after Fard and after the voluntary prayers as well, which Muhammad Izhar uh, inquired about it by saying the Sunnah prayers. The second question from Zinesbim is saying, I found out my prayers for over a year were invalid. But I would constantly repeat my shahada and repent from shirk kuf because of the wiswas. So does that mean that I have to make up the prayers? Wait a minute. Because we have multiple questions in one. And I predict that the brother or the sister the name is kind of ambiguous, doesn't say what's, whether it's he or she, says that he or she is suffering from wiswas. And uh, apparently the wiswas in his or her case is related to assuming or hearing or saying some words of disbelief. So he thinks that my prayers were invalid accordingly even though I keep repeating my shahada. Brothers and sisters, if a person is having the OCD, the obsessive compulsive disorder, the, cl the clinical uh, illness, or if a person is having mere waswasa, where he hears some whispers of Satan in his or her ears or within themselves as they are putting words on their mouth, as long as the person does not utter that word willingly, then he or she is not blameworthy. Not to worry about it. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay? So they're not disbelievers? No, they're not disbelievers. Alhamdulillah. The rest to be continued after this call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Fatima. Alaikum assalam. Go ahead, um, please. I'm listening. Yes, my question is that I have to fast for three days for breaking in oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And um, uh, my question is, can I combine the intention of fasting those three days with Mondays and Thursdays fast? Okay, I got your question. So our respected sister owes some fasting. And she's asking about combining the intentions. There is no combination of intention here. But if your fasting of the kafara making up a ransom for an oath which you fail to fulfill, that's mandatory. <clears throat> or for a vow which you did not fulfill, that's mandatory. Or for making up fasting which you missed during Ramadan, that is mandatory. If it coincides the days which you normally fast of Mondays and Thursdays, you will receive the extra reward, yes. But there is no combination of intention in a sense that I'm fasting this and that. No. Because this is a mandatory fasting which has an exclusive intention. As I mentioned earlier, this is similar to making up the missed days of Ramadan. It's obligatory. But Sister Fatima, it is worth of mentioning here as well that before you resort into fasting the three days, I got to remember because I figure that you're calling from the States. So feeding 10 people, it's about 50 bucks, which is not really a big deal. I think and I believe uh, as well that an average person in, in the States can afford $50. And that's why I like to remind myself and you, my dear viewers, in case of failing to fulfill your oath or breaking an oath or nadh, then the Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَا عَقَّدْتُمُ الْأَيْمَانِ فَكَفَّارَتُهُ إِطْعَامُ عَشَرَةِ مَسَاكِينَ مِنْ أَوْسَطِ مَا تُطْعِمُونَ أَهْلِيكُمْ أَوْ كِسْوَتُهُمْ أَوْ تَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ ذَلِكَ كَفَّارَةُ أَيْمَانِكُمْ إِذَا حَلَفْتُمْ So the kafara or the ransom in order is as follows. Number one, feeding عشرات مساكين Ten poor people. How much food? How many meals? One meal. How much each meal is? An average meal of what you normally eat. <coughs> And you can have another choice of his sweat to whom, which is buying clothes for them. Obviously, we don't have slaves anymore, so we skip this one. And in case that one cannot afford feeding or clothing 10 masakin, then in this case, you resort to the fasting of three days. So you don't just resort to fasting right away. Okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Zohra from Canada. Zohra, wa alaykum salam. Do me a favor and raise your voice, please. Yes. Um, I have a question. Uh, I um, in uh, these Western countries, like in Muslim home, I saw uh, a statue of Buddha, uh, and I uh, I objected. Uh, you cannot put it in the home. And the lady said it's just a decoration piece. Uh, I think, uh, what, what is your opinion? Is it permissible? It's from the decoration point of view. Or it okay. is not at all. Uh, we should not put the uh, Buddha in our house. Well, the answer to your question, Sister Zohra, is it isn't permissible for a Muslim who believes in Allah and in the last day to adorn his or her house with any statues or images of living creatures. And it makes it even worse if the person adorns his or his house with a statue or an image of an object which people worship instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no sincerity of the intention here, or I do not mean it, it's just a means of adornment or decoration. This is an act of associating partners to Allah in worship. It is ta'zeem, honoring and respecting what people do take as gods or deities besides Allah or instead of Him. And it's not permissible for 
a believer to do so. As far as what you should do is just give the advice and Allah guides whomever he wants. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Amna from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada Amna. I want to ask two questions, please. Sure. Um, my first question is about a feeling that I have. I, I was just thinking of a logo for a law firm, and I even finalized a logo and the color and the design and everything. And But at, at heart, I was very comfortable, like 100%. And that night when I woke up, well, that night I had a dream uh, for a logo, the colors, design and when i woke up i made that on the computer and when we read it it spells allah and it felt like it was a sign from allah and i've been so excited ever since then but my brothers were like you know i shouldn't think that way that allah gave me a sign for you know registering a law firm so if you can say something about this i mean it spells allah when you read it and it was like in my dream and that's what i drew in the morning and can i ask you a second question as well please go ahead it's a question that I asked you yesterday about inheritance and the week before that too, but their program was interrupted before that. I just want to ask because my friend has been arguing about it. I just want to know if the at least one or two exceptions where women can get more than the son, uh, the daughter can get more than the son, especially if let's say the son has been negligent towards the parents and the daughter has been providing for parents all her life. Can you please tell me that? Okay, with regards to your second question, there is no exception in the inheritance law. Uh, such what you mentioned earlier, if the, if the daughter is more obedient than the son or whatever. In one's life, if my daughter is helping me, assisting me, looking after me, and I pay her for that, and I give her, that is permissive. But when I die, and at the time of death, I don't have any access over the wealth which I used to own. It is to be distributed according to Allah's decree, as it is mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. And uh, yes, I remember now, you called yesterday or last night on Iman Channel program, Islamica, and uh, the question was asked last week as well. And I mentioned there are many cases, about 30 plus cases where women may inherit similar to men or more than men, or end up blocking men from the inheritance. Uh, this is something that we teach the students at the university. And I shared with you the couple cases only uh, where a woman gets half the share of the man. In the case of the children and the siblings. Okay? In any case, Sister Amina, if you need further details about the rest of the cases, you're most welcome to inbox me. We'll be more than happy to show you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ I know where you're coming from, and I think after calling a few times, you are either working in a law firm or in a law school. And I know how some people who are very secular, and they say that the law of Allah is not fit for today's world. If a person definitely believes that Allah's law is not perfect for any time, then he refuses Allah then it's not me who's calling him not Muslim. It's he himself or she herself for saying that I'm not interested in this Islam. It's either clear white or clear black. There is nothing in between. Islam, the Almighty Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kaffah Which means, oh you believe, you want to become Muslims? Enter heartedly and entirely, wholesomely into Islam. Submit yourself entirely to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Islam, you don't pick and choose. I may be a sinner. I may be drinking. He may be committing whatever sin, but he believes that's a sin, and he is asking Allah for repentance. He's still a Muslim. But if a person perceives haram as halal, or halal as haram, or rejects any of the laws of Allah, then he or she chooses not to be Muslims. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad from the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. Muhammad, go ahead. Khair, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, akhi, and you? 
Okay. Second or third question. Okay. We lost Muhammad, but we've got two of your questions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. Salheen from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, brother Salheen. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing great. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Brother Salheen. Mashallah. Uh, Sheikh, my question is, uh, so I work in uh, customer service, and uh, there are a lot of times, uh, a lot of uh, women who come to me uh, asking questions, and they are not uh, dressed uh, appropriately. Mm. So my question is, is it uh, okay for me to look at their face uh, when I'm uh, speaking to them or uh, answering their inquiries. Jazana wa iyakum. Thank you, Brother Salheen. Customer service. Abdu Tawaf from Germany. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? I'm doing fine. Alhamdulillah, Akhi. Thank you. Um, Sheikh, I have a question. Uh, my question is that can I um, read Quran on behalf of my mother and I read it with the niyyah that may Allah give this ajr to my mother who is still alive, but she cannot read because she's very sick. Shafahallahu afaha. May Allah give her a quick shifa. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Sheikh. You're and um, also, I wanted to ask, like, uh, how to, how to best, what is the best way to uh, make shukr of Allah? Okay. Got your question, uh, Abdul Tawaf from Germany. Aya from uh, pa uh, Pakistan about the logo. Uh, uh, it's perfectly okay to hang the name of Allah or whatever, to make it a logo of a company and the name of a company? No, of course not. Because your law firm is not Allah's law firm. And obviously, in your law firm, many ahkam have nothing to do with Allah and may not be even approved by Allah. Okay? So if it spells as Allah exactly, A-L-L-A-H, which in English reads as Allah, I wouldn't consider this as a sign. Allah doesn't have a, a law firm. If the spelling is similar to it, but it is not exactly the same, like A L L A, okay, Allah, that is okay. But if it is the exact same spelling, I wouldn't put the same spelling because it will be read as Allah's law firm. And that is not true. Thank you, Aya. May Allah bless you and your family. And I want to tell you that we never get bored or offended by as many questions as any viewer may send. And Alhamdulillah, shukla, we encourage the viewers since 16 years ago to ask no silly questions. Yani, no question we perceive it as silly. Even if some of the viewers perceive it as silly. What is this silly question? To me, it's not. Why? Because if the viewer needs to ask this question and it will make a difference for them to hear the answer, then to me, it's a serious question. Even if it was answered so many times before. So I encourage you and all the viewers not to hesitate to call in and ask if you need to inquire about anything pertaining to the deen of Allah. Thank you, Sister Amna. Assalamu alaikum.
Ahmed from Singapore. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ahmed. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Go ahead. Ahmed? Uh, Sheikh? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I have a question uh, on behalf of my mom and my wife. Okay. Okay, uh, during sujood, is the prayer valid if uh, both palms uh, are covered with the jilbab and touching the prayer mat? Meaning, uh, when touching the prayer mat, means there is no skin contact on the prayer mat. Because uh, they were told by another sheikh that their prayer is uh, invalid if their palms are covered by a layer of cloth when touching the prayer mat. No, Ahmed, their prayer is valid. For a woman, I think I did answer this question last week, and I said, she may pray with her hands uncovered, but if she does, her prayer is valid. Okay? So if she's wearing khimar and she keeps the hands beneath the khimar and she puts them on sujood under the khimar, their prayer is valid as well. Okay? Okay. Got the answer? Barakallah feek. Ahmed from Singapore. Sayyid from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum, brother Sayyid. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brother. Go ahead. All right, Sheikh, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Always in need for dua. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Sheikh, I have a question as regard to protests. Uh, maybe you might have heard that in Nigeria there is protests all over the, the country and calling for calling the president for 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 justice against the people that have been victimized by the police. Mm. And so I would like to know I would like to know what's the stand of uh, protests in Islam like sure. what does Islam say about Sayyid, this? Uh, Can we go out? Sayyid, I want to ask a question. Isn't it true that? A couple of days ago, the president issued a resolution to resolve that special forces unit of the police, which have, uh, uh, which was involved in many brutality. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get your question, Sheikh. There's well, no issue. I read in the news just a couple of days ago oh. that in Nigeria, okay. the president resolved that special forces, uh, which was causing the trouble and making some brutality and that was captured on camera and he turned those who were involved into investigation okay yes Sheikh. uh those those special posts that were that, that, that carry out the brutality have been this i mean this bond by the president okay. and some of them have been uh, have been arrested and they are facing charges but still the people are I'm, out I'm there very, protesting that they I'm want very glad to hear that I'm very, very glad to hear that. Police, uh, police brutality, army brutality, civilians brutality against innocent people is not acceptable whatsoever and should not be tolerated. Um, from an Islamic perspective, if your country allows those and organizes and regulates the peaceful protests where you demand justice, then it's permissible. Islam doesn't have any problem with that no human being is above law neither a king nor a president or a prince and by the end we're human beings i'm sitting before you answering questions and you may think this person or this sheikh or that sheikh in nigeria is a very pious person but by the end of the day he's a human being he commits errors and mistakes he may be good as a sheikh but not good as a politician right so if somebody was put in that position and he is not fit for it and did not shoulder the responsibility and some cops were corrupt, I, where I lived in the States, you may not believe that. There was a small town on the way between uh, Victoria and, Tex and, and, and Houston. It's like a couple hours drive. But this town, always, always the police there were very rude. And all of a sudden, the uh, the state arrested all the police officers, the sheriff department, and the judges because they were running this whole business for private business, charging people tickets, fake tickets, okay? So that means even in a country like the USA, 
okay? You may find people who are uh, corrupt a lot, of course. We have to protest that. We have to put a stop to that, but legally and peacefully, unarmed, without raising arms, without hurting innocent people, and burning shops, stores, and streets, and houses, and causing damages to others and their properties. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La darara wa la darar. Harm should not be inflicted nor reciprocated. There will be an election in a couple of weeks in, in America. And uh, the president decided that, or he was asked, and he did not give a positive sign that he may peacefully hand over uh, power to the successing uh, president. So if people march in the streets to protest that or the killing of innocent people, that is a right, right? Shall we just sit and be like sheep and be, get slain and slaughtered without even being vocal, without making our voice heard, without stopping the oppressors and the perpetrators? But as I said, if they require permits, we get the permit. If they give us a designated area to protest and raise the banners to say that this is wrong, we do that peacefully. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, akhi. Barakallah feek. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I'm working with a friend. He is Qadiani Ahmadi Muslim. And uh, I have a working relationship with him. Mm. But beside that, he is always insisting me to invite for a dinner or a lunch. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm always uh, like uh, refusing or rejecting his offer and uh, pretending that I'm busy. So he's inviting me and my family, my kids. Uh, so I just want to know, I also approach uh, one of my friend Mufti in Pakistan. He said like, uh, those are like the, the Qadiani Ahmadis are the enemies of Islam. You cannot uh, eat their halal food. So I was just asking to see if... Uh, you see, uh, Abul uh, or Abdul, you said in the beginning, Qadiani Ahmadi Muslim. Islam means to testify to the oneness of Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his last messenger. Does he testify that? Does he believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last messenger of God? Abdul, mm -hmm. I'm asking you. Yeah, no, no, he... Uh, so, okay. uh, so it will, as, be sufficient, my study. it will be sufficient to say I have a colleague or a co-worker who is Qadiani. Muslim, a Muslim is a person who says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And he believes that ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirrijalikum walakir rasul allahi wa khataman nabiyyin this is what Allah said in the Quran and I have many ahadith also in this respect so ahadith so in surah al-ahzab chapter number 33 remember this ayah number ayah number 40 Allah the almighty said Muhammad is the seal of the prophethood there will not be any prophet after him. Anyone who claims that there was a prophet after Muhammad isn't a Muslim. Anyone who believes in any prophet after Muhammad, peace be upon him, isn't a Muslim. Doesn't believe in the Quran. It's as simple as that, Akhi. As far as the meat which is slaughtered by Muslims or people of the book, Jews and Christians, who are uh, chast, then it is permissible to eat their dabiha. This is what Allah said in Surah Al-Ma'idah. قُلْ أُحِلَّ لَكُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتُ وَطَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حِلُّ لَكُمْ وَطَعَامُكُمْ حِلُّ لَهُمْ This ayah tells us, I am allowed to eat the zabiha, which was sacrificed by a Jewish or a Christian person, provided they did not kill it. Rather, they sacrificed it. They did not mention the name of other than Allah. So if a non-Muslim says, in the name of Jesus, at the time of slaughtering, I'm not going to eat it. If a Muslim, at the time of slaughtering, he said, in the name of Ali, in the name of Hussein, in the name of whatever, then this animal becomes 
حرام totally حرام for a Muslim to eat it. Allah says ولا تأكلوا مما لم يذكر اسم الله عليه. Uh, we'll take a short break. We'll be back inshallah in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, our phone numbers and all the contact informations should appear on the bottom of the screen. And meanwhile, we have some callers. Assalamu alaikum, Mahdi from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Mahdi. Go ahead. Yeah, I have two questions. About, first one is about car insurance. You know? So if I pay car insurance for the annual, I have to pay like two thousand pound. But if I want to pay like a monthly, so I have to pay like one hundred fifty pound extra. So this is this one hundred fifty pound extra is it viva or something like that? And my second question is, if someone have any relationship, so before getting married, she have to tell his future wife to her past or anything else. Is it necessary to tell his past? Okay. Let me tackle Mahdi's questions quickly. Before I forget, as you know that I'm getting old and sometimes we tend to forget things. And sometimes I fail to read my own handwriting. It's funny though. So, Akhi, uh, if the payment, if it is deferred and you have to pay interest, then this is usury. But if they do not give you interest, rather they say, this is 150 if you pay, right away and it becomes 200 if there is a deferred amount and this is the service provider himself or herself they do not say 150 plus six percent interest seven percent interest whatever then the letter is permissible selling you that pen for 10 pounds if you pay 10 pounds right now but if you postpone them and you pay them in a couple months it will be 12 or 13 pounds the same provider the same seller with two different prices, okay, no extras. The new price is 12, it's permissible. When I get married or I get engaged, there are certain things which I have to be honest and clear about it. Like if the person is already married, if the person was previously married and having kids, okay? Or if the person happened to have kids from an outside marriage relationship because it's something that will surface. But if a person has or used to commit sins before uh, that, and he or she have repented. They don't have boyfriends and girlfriends anymore. They don't drink, they don't smoke, alhamdulillah shukla, and their uh, physical effect. Then I don't have to discuss the past. I'm not obliged to share with the person, well, in the past I used to smoke, but alhamdulillah I quit. Or before Tawbah in Jahili, I used to have a girlfriend. Don't talk about it if you have sincerely repented. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, Hassan from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Hassan, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam. My question is for someone who traveled in airplane and there's a fajr prayer. That fajr prayer to be silenced or like normal fajr prayer when he's traveled through an airplane? Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you, Hassan. Whether you are flying airborne or on a ship or land, uh, in the Fajr prayer, you can pray it. If you're praying by yourself, you can pray it with a loud voice. You can pray it silently. Best is to hear yourself, okay? This is if you pray singular, by yourself. But if you pray in Jama'ah, then Fajr prayer, the Imam must raise his voice so that he will be heard by the followers. Uh, Bill and Babu, from Bangladesh says, is it permissible to use any hand or face cream after wudu and before salah? Yes, it's permissible, no problem. And there was a question, Januddin Abdul, uh, the question was sent multiple times. He says that somebody, a wife, who asked for divorce and the husband did not divorce her, yet she got married to another man. Is this second marriage valid? No, this is adultery. This is adultery. And if she did that knowingly, then she should go to jail or prison because she's officially now married to, I mean, 
practically she's married to two people and this is against not the, sh the sharia but against any law on earth except in some places such as in the amazon so a woman who's married or divorced and she's in the idda of a revocable divorce after the first and second divorce isn't allowed and even a widow four months and ten days the idda is not allowed to talk about marriage and it's not permissible for any person who's interested in marrying her to propose because in the case of the revocable divorce she is still officially married you know and i'm saying that out loud and i'm putting emphasis by repeating it because i even happened to get a call a few days ago after the program one sister said that my husband is in jail and he divorced me we agreed that we will do the divorce on papers for some legal matters but we're not divorced and now somebody is proposing to me and i agreed can i marry him i said are you still married to your first husband she said well he took me back and he said you're my wife and he revoked his divorce so why are you asking because you're still officially married whether he's traveling or he's in jail when you get divorced and after the idda collapses when the husband dies and after the idda of four months and ten days or giving birth is over when the uh khula, after the idda as well before that he can't just take proposals and, and get married you cannot get married while you're already married. Assalamu alaikum. Roman from Finland. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, Roman. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, brother. So I have a um, question regarding explanation of a dream I saw last night. Hmm. Well, but I do not and... interpret dreams, uh, Roman. Yes. I do not publicly interpret dreams so if it is about interpretation of a dream i will not be able to assist you unfortunately okay okay that, that is okay then i have just another question kind of sure it is uh, regarding marriage okay um uh, i am in the age that i should get married and i'm uh, inshallah looking for like an uh, someone who can like uh, guide me or like you know to be married to it uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit nervous that I'm asking. You take your time. Relax and take your time. So uh, my my question is, uh, how would I proceed or like what should I do in order to uh, kind of like, you know, get the guidance that I have someone who is um, complete within or at least like who 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 is um, uh, who prays properly and then who can guide me also that if I'm doing something wrong, that she can uh, guide me that if I'm doing something wrong. So in a sense, my question is that like, uh, uh, what would be a proper way to look to get married? Thank you. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you, Roman. Assalamu alaikum. Hamid from Malaysia. Assalamu alaikum, Hamid. Yeah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. Uh, 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 Sheikh, uh, may I ask uh, three questions? Am I allowed or can I read this one? <laughs> yes, sir, allowed. And for people from Kuala Lumpur, you have unlimited access. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Sheikh, uh, my first question is uh, actually a situation which I'm, I'm facing now. Because a friend of mine, uh, who is a very, very close friend of mine, he asked me, hello? I hear you. Go ahead, continue. Okay. Yes, uh, Sheikh. So uh, my uh, friend uh, who asked me uh, that he's actually uh, an engineer. He's uh, working on uh, oil and gas, all those uh, different projects. But uh, he asked me, for an, uh, he just joined a company as a pipe, uh, as an acting partner. Uh, then he is looking for some investment to invest on the machines because currently they are renting the machines uh, from the other party. But he said, "I uh, can I rent rent the machine?" And then he said, "Every month he will pay me the rentals." But he said, after 
couple of years or three years, whenever I want to uh, withdraw my my partnership with him, then he said uh, he will pay me the full money whichever I invested. I mean the 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 capital money for the machine. Okay. So here I am. I'm so uh, I'm not very sure. Is it allowed or you please also give me which is which is more allowed way to do this? Please yeah, explain yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, if not, Hamid, Hamid. So you're saying that. Somebody who is a partner in an oil and gas company now wants you and him to buy some machines and rent them to the company. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, Sheikh. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah, shukrullah. Yes, it is permissible, Akhi, provided that there is no hidden in it. Like he doesn't give priority for himself. The company makes an auction or proposals and open the chances for people to give them the best offer. So he doesn't favor himself. He's like everybody else. He doesn't favor that choice because it's his machine. Okay? Go ahead, yeah, Hamid. Continue with your questions. Yes, uh, Sheikh, but uh, the, the the very important thing is, uh, he said whenever, for example, I'm investing $10,000, then after two years or three years, uh, I mean, I will be keep getting the rentals, uh, either a fixed rental or he said a 20% of the profit. So he keep giving. But after a couple, يا حميد اخي حميد try again try again no problem السلام عليكم عبد الحميد from the UK السلام عليكم عبد الحميد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله شيخ وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته عبد الحميد go ahead طيب. Okay. عبد الحميد try again and حميد try again. Okay. إن شاء الله. Roman from Finland. He is interested in getting married. He doesn't know how to go about it. For me, if I'm at your age and I want to get married, I will proceed towards the nearest masjid or Islamic center. I'll talk to the imam because he knows a lot of people. He knows the gentleman. This uncle must have a daughter or this uncle. Or maybe one of the sisters came and visited them and said, I have a girl at the marriageable age. So he is an encyclopedia pertaining to the people who are living in the community. And this is actually an inseparable part of the job of the imam. He should play that role. Facilitate this matrimonial business and matching based on his uh, sincere uh, knowledge of who is fit for who. And of course, it's just arranging the meeting or the proposal. Uh, then when you meet the family, if you like the girl, if you like the family, and you inquire about their manners and behavior, then Bismillah, pray istikhara, and may Allah make it easy uh, for you. Muhammad, Abdul Hamid from uh, uh, the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Hamid. Wa alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullah. I've been trying to contact uh, Askuda for the past few months. I've not always been able to gain touch. Alhamdulillah, we finally got you, Akhi. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my question is basically uh, my wife had a uh, baby loss, a pregnancy loss at six weeks, but we didn't realize until around 11 weeks. So, of course, she uh, was kind of confused on uh, what period does she have to wait for. Uh, observing her daily uh, obligatory salah. Yeah, Abdul so Hamid. Uh, Abdul Hamid, was that your wife? Yes. Okay, may Allah grant you both patience and give you better than what you lost. I mean, and especially her. May Allah give her patience. When, when the fetus or the uh, miscarriage uh, happen, when you look at the fetus, was it just like a piece of meat or did it have uh, you can recognize that it has fingers and toes. Abdul Hamid, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. You know, when miscarriage happens, when miscarriage happens, yes. normally either uh, the person would find like a, a piece of clot, blood clot, or, oh, yeah. or a, a semi creation. 
like a little baby, but small little baby. But you can see there are fingers, five fingers in each hand. You can see that there is a nose and ears. So what did you see? Um, well, what happened was actually the baby stopped breathing at six weeks. So it wasn't like a miscarriage. It was the baby when they did a, when they did a, uh, a scan at the hospital. Uh, they did a scan when she was 11 weeks. For the doctors, they told her that the baby actually stopped breathing at six weeks because the baby wasn't growing. So they had to give her a proper uh, medical procedure to take the baby out. Not uh, a surgical procedure, but she was given a, a tablet to take. So the, uh, the you see, the, you, the you see, brother Abdul Hamid, I, I wasn't asking about what happened. I, I was asking about when the miscarriage happened. Did you see the fetus? Did you see it? Yeah, she saw it. She saw it when okay. she was. Did it have? Baby. Did it have figures like fingers, face, nose, eyes, and ears? Um, yeah. At that stage, of course, the limbs were already out. Face, arms, limbs, legs, everything was already out. It was six weeks. Okay, Abdul Hamid, listen to the answer, Akhi. May Allah grant you patience. If the if the fetus was created and have an image of a human being, then we will treat the bleeding, postpartum bleeding, like regular post-delivery bleeding. So no prayers, no fasting until the bleeding stops. And if the fetus was simply a piece of blood clot or no image was created, then in this case, take a shower and start praying right away. Okay, that's called an irregular bleeding. Barakallah feek. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Last caller. Ramiza from India. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you? I'm doing great, Brother? sister Ramiza. Al alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, how to live like sahabas? How to live like sahaba? You just caught yeah. me. You caught me in okay. the last one and a half minute and this question needs okay. to be uh, uh, answered in a whole in a whole episode so inshallah okay. uh, i'm gonna ask the director mm. to remind me even to do a live okay. broadcast just to speak about how to live like the sahaba inshallah thank you okay. sister inshallah. Raniza. inshallah for now muhammad from the philippines um uh, you know who's having an argument with a friend who's saying that it's okay to have a girlfriend what, what do you mean it's okay if somebody comes home and he takes your sister or your daughter and what are you going? We're going to sleep together. Who are you? I'm her, his boyfriend, her boyfriend, and now we can say his or her, it doesn't matter. Okay? No, that's not permissible. It is not permissible for a man to touch a woman who is not lawful for him. She's neither mahram nor a wife, it's not permissible even to shake hands, let alone hugging and kissing and going out together and going to the movie theater, that's not permissible. These are not the practices of Muslims, be careful. Okay, second question, if a person forgot, um, and, I, and I think some people, like Sister Aisha was asking a question about shaking hands with a woman who's not lawful for you, of course this is haram. Maybe she was commenting on a photo where I was in Nigeria with babies. But the beautiful kids, they wear hijab. They want to wear hijab. So because they're wearing hijab, they look like, but they were seven, eight years old, nine years old. They were not grown up girls. Okay. I hope you verify that. The uh, second question, somebody forgot to uh, sit for the middle tashahud. He is an imam. If he was reminded while he was halfway or closer to the sitting position, he should go back and sit. Then by the end of the prayer, he prays the two prostrations for forgetfulness and the followers will follow him. If he had already gotten up or closer to standing, then he shouldn't go back. And by the end, he would only do the two prostrations. And that's it. So Alheen from Canada, as a customer service, I have to look in the face of the clients and the customers. In Islam, it's permissible to have the first look, which is to identify the person or if it is a look by accident. But looking at the face of a woman and the beauty of a woman who is not 
permissible for you is not permissible to do that the second or third time deliberately. We've, we've, de we've dealt with uh, all kind of women in the West. I don't have to look to her in the face, okay? Because, uh, you know, it's hard to find a job nowadays and your job is a, is a decent job, alhamdulillah. So I don't have to look to the person in the face or in the eyes. The first time to verify the identity, if I'm going to make a refund or return an item or whatever. Um, uh, Abdul Tawaf from Germany, he says, can I recite Quran on behalf of my, mother, of my mother who is sick and she cannot read anymore? I will give you a better option, Akhi. If she plays the Quran next to her, if you recite Quran while you sitting next to her, she, by listening to the recitation of the Quran, she gets the same reward as if she's recited, provided listening, not just mere hearing, okay? Irrespective of reciting Quran and granting the reward to somebody else, whether living or dead, this is a matter which is disputed between the scholars. The vast majority of the scholars are of the view that you can only grant the reward of an act of worship to somebody else if that was listed and approved by the messenger of Allah, such as supplicating, giving in a charity, fasting on behalf of a lay person who did not fast, okay? And that's why they did it, Hajj or Umrah, but not Tawaf, not the prayers, not the recitation of the Quran. There are other scholars who say that by analogy, any act of worship, you do it, you wanna give the reward to somebody else, be my guest. I like the first option. And I like to make my mother listen to the Quran or I bring my Mus'haf and I read next to her. I earn my thawab and she earns the same thawab by listening. Allah Ta'ala A'la Alam. The, the last question, which is what is the best way to give thanks to Allah? The best way to give thanks to Allah is number one, acknowledging his favors upon us. And number two, utilizing them in what is permissible and to please him. This is the greatest means of giving shukr. And finally, by acknowledging that verbally, by saying Alhamdulillah, thanks and praises be to Allah for giving us whatever He gave us. He said, peace be upon Him, in Allah la yarda anil abdi an yakula al aklata fayahmadahu alayha, aw yashrab al sharbata fayahmadahu alayha. Allah is most pleased with the servant whom whenever He eats or drinks, He thanks Him. So eating and drinking, then thanking Allah will bring the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in today and until the next time, which is going to be tomorrow, inshallah. Same time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I say to you, this is the word of the Lord, and I say to you, 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 and I say to you,